Hi there, Lime Macedo. So we can hear you from LimeMacedo.com. Who is Lime Macedo and Think Personal Branding? All right. Today, I thought I'd give you the book review of this book, When Breathe Becomes Air by, well, what's his name? Paul Kalan, Kalanti. Okay, Paul Kalanti. Now, this book has a um, couple of um, you know, high-level phrases. Like, for example, Apul Gavande says uh, that this book is rattling heartbreaking and beautiful then um, you have uh, the daily express saying that it's powerful and moving uh, you have the economist that says it's less a memoir than a reflection of life and purpose a vital book and you have sunday times saying that it's moving humble and impossible to ignore so this is the book when breathe becomes air by paul kalan t okay now i even found out through research that Bill Gates read this book and he was pretty moved and he gave amazing reviews. So, you know, when you have so many people talk so highly about a book, obviously you think, oh, this is a must buy book. Now, that's why I purchased the book. And obviously the reason I purchased this book is because it's about a guy, a doctor, Indian guy who is about to die. And, um, you know, then he shares his perspective on life. So I, you know, given the fact that I nearly try to kill myself, I was about to die. Maybe this would give me some insight. So in a nutshell, what this book is all about is this guy, Paul Kalan, Kalan T, a doctor, a surgeon who's on the verge of finishing his neurosurgeon training, is diagnosed with stage four lung cancer, even though he does not smoke or drink or whatever. Okay. The book can be divided into three parts. Number one is the biography of Paul, uh, starting when he was a teenager, trying to discover his true calling in life. And, um, you know, the part where he, you know, got introduced um, to death, that is patients and whatever. Part two is his reflection on being a doctor and the doctor-patient relationship. And part three is once he's diagnosed and he knows that he's going to die, his philosophical quest to understanding what is, you know, what is life all about, what makes life meaningful, what is, you know, your purpose. Now, throughout this book, throughout this book, um, what I found out is, uh, the the author was having this tremendous amount of pressure, both time as well as in his own health, to complete this book. Now you need to understand this is um, you're, you're, this is a book that needs a lot of creativity, a lot of input, a lot of uh, substance. So you know you need to be really sharp. You really need to be in the best of your health, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. However, the doctor, you know, the author of this book, he is dying. He has stage four cancer and obviously because of chemotherapy and all the suffering and pain that he's going through. So he wouldn't be able to put in the 100% that he could. And that is why this book kind of feels incomplete. Okay. Now, when I do give you this review, I want you to understand that I'm giving it from a very neutral point of view and being very subjective. Okay. I, um, I also want to keep... Uh, I want to make it pretty objective to the point where it does not, you know, lose the path of, oh, you know, feel sorry for that is why I'm giving this book a good review. Okay. Uh, because if you check on YouTube, you'd see a lot of people cry and, you know, wipe their tears and all that. I just want to keep it, you know, straightforward, logical. Now, the author being a medical professional and a Stanford graduate, you know, who specializes in English literature, when he was stuck down with cancer, he... Uh, he, he knew that he had very less time. So obviously now he has to choose between being a doctor or doing, you know, what else he likes to do. That is spend time with his family or maybe write a book or, um, you know, um, pass on his legacy to his daughter, especially uh, his child. He didn't have a child and they decided to have a child. Okay. So in this sense, this book is a very powerful gesture by an individual who knew that he was going to die and he wanted to do something that was truly purposeful okay so this is where i respect the author however from the point of view of actually being a worthwhile readable book i really felt this book was incomplete um you know see let, let's be honest it's it's not easy to write a book forget writing a book try writing an article you'll come to know how pressurizing it is so i felt that he had taken a lot on his plate that's number one the second thing is in the beginning, it feels that, okay, he is trying to tell me a story, but somewhere down the line, it just started rambling on with philosophical blah, 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 just talking about life. You just, you know, 
I was just reading and just wondering, okay, where is he going with all this? What is next? You know, what, what, you know, what, 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 are, what is the author trying to tell me? Um, you can keep asking questions. What's the meaning of life? What's the purpose of life? What am I going to do next? You know, what will my family think? But then at some point, you know, you start scratching your head and wondering, okay, fine, but what's next? And that is where it started to get really bland, boring, and just boastful at times, you know, saying that I achieved this, I achieved that. Fine, man. It's, so what is next? So even though one part is pretty powerful that you're going to die and you know that your time is up, the other way it's like, what are you trying to tell me through all this? So I just, I just felt the whole thing was kind of like it, it was a wasted opportunity. The only thing, if you ask me, which was really worthwhile was maybe the last, the ending, the epilogue, where Paul's widow, that's Lucy Kalanti, she she sums up the entire message, the gist of what the author is trying to say in one single chapter, which I felt was, you know, equal to the worth of the entire book. So, you know, if I had to conclude, I would say that if you're interested to read a book about life and death and how, you know, it doesn't necessarily need to have, let's say, a happy ending. Well, this can be the book. But if you're looking at a book that is really memorable, that is, you know, life-changing or give you something that is like, oh, wow, th this book fails. It's at its worst, it's really boring and unforgettable. It's, sorry, forgettable. And uh, at its worst, it's, it's just, at its best, it's just ordinary. So... At its best, ordinary, at its worst, you know, it's truly forgettable. So I was bored. I was glad that I finished reading this book. I just didn't understand what was the hype about this book. And, um, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful, uh, disrespectful to a guy, nice guy, you know, who wanted to leave something good for his family. But I'm just talking about this book. And I'll tell you, this book is really boring. Okay. If you really want something worthwhile, I would say just go to YouTube, type, when Breathe Becomes Air, uh, Paul Calanti, and I think that is where you'll get a better gist of what the author is trying to say. So uh, overall, I give this book a review of 1 out of 10. Absolutely boring. Don't bother buying this book. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think this book is worth reading, not worth reading? I'd like to hear your thoughts. Like the video, thumbs up. Don't like it, thumbs down. This is me signing off for now. Take care.